Today, I am testing out four amazing drivers, but there's only one spot available in my bag. So which one of these clubs is gonna come out on top? Every driver that I'm hitting today, I have tested out before, but I've never put them head to head like this before. I've got three drivers, which I know you're gonna recognize that have been released this year, but then also I've got a curveball, which I think could actually blow the other ones out of the water. Now we're gonna be testing these drivers back in the studio, but today we are definitely not in Manchester. So we're up at Glen Eagles for a few days, playing on the courses, doing some vids here, and I thought, wow, what better setting to smash some drivers into oblivion. So first up, we have the Titleist TSR3. Now I've done a full review on this club, which you can find here, but overall, it's been very impressive. So I've been fitted very thoroughly for this driver and the flight out on the golf course has actually been really good. The data back in the studio was solid first time round, but it's actually using this in a few competitions that's made me think, you know what? It's got a chance of getting in the bag. Because when it's down behind the ball, it's so simple. It's so like classic. It just really does remind me of Titleist drivers of old. is absolutely striped. I've got the GC3 out with me today. Carry-wise on that was 303, and it wasn't a great strike. This is just a really strong launching driver, and when it's behind the ball, because of how it looks, I just feel I can shape it. I feel confident. It's also, if you check out the original video, actually randomly quite forgiving. Oh, get in the hole. Get in the hole. And when I say get in the hole, I mean the bunker short. Compared to the other drivers in this battle for the bag, I would say that the TSR3 is actually the simplest as well. Like it's a full titanium construction. There's no thrills to it. It just looks, sounds, feels good. And flight wise, straight at the pin again. It's a great driver, very impressive. Next, we have a driver which I actually think is part of one of the most impressive releases of this year. We have the Rogue ST LS Triple Diamond. And yes, despite being one of my favorites of the year, it does have a stupid name. But this whole Rogue ST line, I've actually been really impressed with. So please check out the review here. Now, this is the driver that I've been using for most of the year and which currently still holds a place at the top of my bag. That is why. Compared to the TSR3, I actually really like the feeling of the Callaway driver. It just feels really springy. And I just feel I can stand on a tee and peel that little fade back into the middle of the fairway just every day, basically. I also found that the Rogue ST series, if you want to check this video out here as well, is actually maybe the new most forgiving driver in golf. Not this particular model, but the Max. Oh. And now onto probably the most talked about release of the year, the Stealth from TaylorMade. Now this is the Stealth Plus, so this is the slightly lower spinning version, and also there's a movable weight. We'll get into the specs of all these clubs a little bit more back in the studio, but of course, this is the driver with a carbon face. The carbon wood age is here. So when I was testing this out originally, I really liked it. I thought it felt a little bit strange, obviously with a completely different material in the club face, it was always gonna be the case. And numbers wise, distance wise, it was comparable to pretty much all the other drivers I was testing as well. Me, just like many other golfers, I did get a little bit swept away in the marketing, you know, about the new face, about it being this new revolution. And maybe I was expecting a little bit too much when I hit it first time. I'm gonna be very interested to see how this compares to the other drivers. It just feel, look and sound different than all the others. So I think this driver is gonna really add something to this comparison. Finally, the last driver.
And last up, late contender to the party and yet released years ago, we have the TaylorMade Sim. Still for my money, one of the best drivers that TaylorMade have produced and just still an absolute beast. <laughs> the TaylorMade Sim, I mean, what can I say about this driver? I absolutely love it. I love the way it looks. I think it just looks so space age, so futuristic. The strikes out of the middle are incredibly, incredibly powerful. The one downside to this driver are heel and toe strikes. It just reduces the spin to almost nothing and the ball doesn't get up in the air. And that is the the biggest contrast with the other drivers within this test. But one of the advantages that this driver has is when it is struck out of the middle, it is, it is just unreal. It just absolutely flies. That is so big. I can, I, you can, I can just see as it's flying through the air, how little spin it's got and how much launch it has. That is just a 300 and 33 yard carry. Now that's the only issue, 1,524 backspin. And all that means is you've got to strike this from the middle, you've got to get it launching, and if you don't, you're as dead as a doorknob. But if you do hit it well, oh my it's just carrying forever. It's time to have an on-course comparison between these four. We've come to the Ryder Cup course here, the PGA, and this, is the second hole. Yeah, don't need to say much more, do I really? Right, we'll start with the TSR. It's basically just over the edge of that bunker off this tee. You're gonna hit a bomb. Go on, clear it, clear it, clear it. Oh, miles over. Yeah, that's 303 carry with the Titleist. And that was, it was so towy. It was so towy. Oh, such a good driver. Stealthy stealth. Now that was struck. 311 carry, and that was struck really, really well. 183 ball speed as well. well that's a bit more like it. 3,150 spin. I'm gonna have to crank this loft a bit lower. All right, onto my current driver. I'll just call it the Callaway. Oh, struck as well. I tell you what, if we could get all the points that these have finished over that bunker, that would be lovely. <laughs> 322 carry, 1800 spin. So that is bang on where I want. Really, really lovely fly onto the sim. <laughs> I want to stride this out in the middle. It'll be a fantastic on-course comparison to the stealth. Same shaft, same loft. But then when you strike it, well, wow, 322 carry. Ah, oh, it's going to be tough. So we're back in the studio and it is time for a definitive test. Simply put, how far do these drivers go in their optimal settings? So here is the full setup of the drivers. So this is the lofts and the shafts that I'm using. I managed to get all the specs pretty much the same. And this is a little bit of trial and error throughout the year. Bear in mind that I've used these clubs for weeks and months on end. I've set aside a few hours today to basically get all the data that I need. But before we get into the hitting, make sure that you wall up that like button and be a subscriber to the channel if you haven't already. If this video gets to 10,000 likes, then I'm gonna throw the winning driver of this comparison into a giveaway. Okay, here we go. Sim is powered up and we are all good to go. So I'm gonna start off with the Titleist the TSR 3. And what I'm looking for here is just consistency in swing speed and strike. When I was testing the TSR 3 out originally, I was getting my swing up to around 120 miles an hour to 124 miles an hour. So if I can maintain that kind of speed, that's gonna give me a good look at what all these drivers are capable. The Titleist driver is the only driver within this test which doesn't incorporate carbon into the crown. Ooh, it sliced it, which tri fell, okay. And Titus believe that the way they've constructed this driver, they've been able to keep the titanium thin enough so they can reposition weight accordingly. That's the big benefit of using carbon in a driver head, is that you can strip weight away from the crown and from the sole and reposition it within the head to give performance benefits. Mm. That was absolutely buttoned. And compared to the other drivers in this test as well, as that carries about 315 yards, it's just how simple it looks. It looks so classic, it looks so sleek. The look when switching to the sim from the Titleist is just is so striking. 
it really, really is. I mean, we've gone from a full titanium club to one which is, it, it just looks so space age and I absolutely love it and the look of it in its own way. Such a different sound as well. Such a different sound. Compared to the Titleist as well, the Sim, even though it is a few years on now, has so many talking points as far as tech. It's got this carbon crown, it's very striking in the way that it looks. It has the twist face rather than just the standard bulge and roll of most drivers. It's got this huge fin on the bottom where the Sim is and it's got that sliding weight. It's got so much going on. Oh, still performs so well as well. I was a little bit necky, but just great. So good. Onto the Stealth Plus, which of course has the carbon face. That is the main difference really between this and the Sim. Like a lot of the things within the head, so that fin, even though it's covered up, the aerodynamics are pretty much the same as the Sim. It's got pretty much the same sliding weight in the front. When I first reviewed the Stealth, well this is the Stealth Plus, when I first reviewed the Stealth lineup, I was potentially slightly underwhelmed, but on second thoughts, TaylorMade have done something really, really impressive with this driver. I mean, what TaylorMade have done here is they completely replaced and changed the material of the club face, the most important part of the driver. And when I first reviewed it, maybe I thought because there wasn't so much of a leap in performance from other models that it was a bit of a failure, but actually, I do see this as a starting point for TaylorMade. Completely changing the face of a driver, how are they gonna actually be able to improve on this? That's the most interesting thing, but also within this test, what's good behind the ball? I actually would have preferred if they'd been more bolder with the design, maybe get some red into the carbon crown. I think the Sim still looks a little bit better. So even though I've been using the Callaway, obviously quite a lot this year, this is a new head with that slightly lowered loft and I think this combines a lot of the good things from the other drivers. I think it looks good, I think they've incorporated the carbon really well into the crown and this series of drivers, so the Rogue ST launches this year, have probably been some of my favourites. The more forgiving models are so forgiving and even this one, which is not the most forgiving in the range, is still forgiving. I have to say as well, I think this driver probably feels the best. Um, it feels very springy, it feels very powerful when struck, and as mentioned on heel and toe strikes, it does feel like it will give you a little bit more leeway. It maybe doesn't feel as fast as the Sim and even the TSR3, but it just feels good. Like, it just feels like a really solid all around club this. So that was a toby one. Look at it go. Right, let's get blasting. I'm gonna give myself about an hour. Collect all the data. Eesh. One eternity later. Okay, the results. So each of these drivers definitely has their merit, from technology to talking points to obviously performance. I would say on the course, my favorites are probably the Callaway and the Titleist, just because they feel a little bit more forgiving and also they feel like they're more shapeable. But to get a true understanding of what these drivers can do, getting the data in a side-by-side -side comparison is absolutely crucial. So here we go, top line numbers. So total carry distance for the Rogue is 309. Total carry distance for the Stealth Plus is 301. Total carry for the TSR3 is 306. And total carry distance for the Sim is 309. So at this moment, we will say that the Sim and that the Rogue are pretty much neck and neck. If we go total distance, we have 333 for the Rogue, 321 for the Stealth Plus, 328 for the TSR3, and 336 for the Sim. Now straight away, that would suggest that the Sim needs to go in the bag. However, I want to draw your attention to what I think is the biggest problem with the Sim. So if we have a look here at the spin rates, now you can see on average that the spin rate with the Sim was 1,918 revs per minute. Now that means that as the ball's flying through the air, the ball is spinning back that amount. Absolutely optimum for a driver for me is around 2000. So again, you'd say, well, that's great. However, the individual spin numbers with the Sim, you can see here there's a wild fluctuation at times with the spin getting down 
as low as 1,145. Now in the sim, that's fine. I'm not hitting into any atmosphere, but a slightly missed stroke and that ball is just gonna drop completely out of the air. We need backspin to keep the ball in the air a little bit longer. And also when the sim is struck from the heel and the toe, it just feels very unforgiving. The TSR3 I think is a fantastic all-rounder. The Stealth Plus, I've just never quite been able to get on with it. I don't know what it is, it might be more of a mental block by this point. But for me, as far as consistency, as far as feel, and as far as distance goes, the Rogue has it. Simply put, it's a complete package. I would say that for me, it's probably the best driver out there in the market. It's forgiveness, it's distance, it's looks, it's pretty much everything. Some of these other drivers have their plus points and maybe edge it over the Rogue, but when you bring everything together, I'd say that the Rogue has it. But these videos are absolutely nothing without your input. And what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna throw up the individual reviews that I did of each of these drivers, and you let me know if you think I've made the right choice. In my mind, I think I have, but of course, I would love to know your input. Can't wait to get out. This is now settled in my mind, which is great. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, I'll see you on the golf course very soon.